Well, welcome, Dr. Hillary Woodson Gaskin. Thank you. I'm Jamila Harris, your Create Income Coach. Welcome to Create Income with or without a job. We are excited to be joined today by an extraordinary medical physician who is also an entrepreneur. She's applying her natural talent, skills, and abilities to the practice of medicine and healthcare in very unique ways. Thank you so much for being with us, Dr. Hillary. Thank you, Jamila, for having me. I appreciate the, the time, the effort that you're doing to share your knowledge and your wisdom. Thank you. I'm glad to know you. Well, I want to just bring our viewers up to date and share some information about you and your background. Dr. Hillary Woodson Gaskins is a medical doctor and business owner operating a successful family medical practice, the Virgin Islands Center for Integrative Medicine. Dr. Woodson is a Spelman graduate and earned her medical degree from Columbia University, College of Physicians and Surgeons. She established her first family medicine practice in 2002 in Washington, DC. Dr. Woodson has transformed her medical practice by expanding to include non-traditional medicine. She embraced holistic healing after intensive study with Queen Afua, holistic medicine practitioner, and after completing a fellowship in integrative medicine at the University of Arizona under the guidance of world-renowned health expert, Dr. Andrew Wheel. At the Virgin Islands Center for Integrative Medicine, Dr. Woodson's patients of all ages are encouraged to take a full inventory of self and introduced to a personalized medicinal template that besides traditional Western medicine includes acupressure, nutrition, mind-body medicine, prayer, body mechanics, herbology, and more. Dr. Hillary Woodson Gaskins is the proud mother of four and loving wife of Toussaint Gaskins, CEO of Innovay Asset Management. In her spare time, you'll find her reading, enjoying all things involving children, and staying connected to nature. We're so happy to have you with us, Dr. Hillary Woodson. Thank you, Jamila. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is a very unique time. I, I think that it's so important. You have such specific things to share. Health, health care, our primary health, and what we can begin to do as individuals proactively to protect and safeguard our health is like primary on everyone's uh, microscope right now. I, I want first to just ask you a little bit more about your background. You have a very personal touch, which is really one of the keys to how you're using your natural talents, gifts, and abilities in actually family med practice, medicine practice. And so share a little bit. You have some real specific events that shaped who you are. And then those now are also shaping how you deal with patients. Yes, yes. Well, um, I grew up in Montgomery County, Maryland, which is one of the wealthiest counties in, in the states, in the United States of America. Um, but I grew up with very strong roots. Uh, my parents immigrated, migrated, not really immigrated, but migrated from Louisville, Kentucky. I was born in Kentucky, so I'm a country girl to the heart. Lots of my family still lives in Kentucky. Um, my grandfather has a park named after him in Kentucky. So my grandfather was a principal of the all black school before, before integration, while schools were still segregated. 
Uh, my father was the star basketball player on the high school team, and his father was his principal. Um, and, but my dad sought further opportunities. You know, he grew up in a small town in Kentucky, uh, ended up going to college, ended up going to grad school, and there just weren't opportunities in Bardstown, Kentucky or in Louisville. So he moved our family to Washington DC area, uh, which most of you probably know is home to the federal government. Uh, so both of my parents were federal workers. They were government workers, you know, and <laughs> there are a lot of us in the audience who, who are and were government workers. Uh, so there was a lot of security in that, you know, there was a paycheck coming um, until the political scene changed a little bit. Uh, so in, I don't remember the actual years, but in the Carter years, I, I think when Reagan was, um, uh, when he was elected, they laid off a lot of people. My father was in the U.S. Public Health Service, so that's where I get my, my population health mindset. Um, and he was a commissioned officer, so political shifts happened, my father was laid off. So that left my mother, who was working for Department of Defense, to kind of bring home the bacon. And, you know, for most of us who go from a two income to a one income uh, existence, things shifted. <clears throat> well, around that time, I was in junior high um, in a, you know, in a county that had great educational opportunities. And I was a curious child. <laughs> you know, I was the youngest of two. Uh, my brother was five years older than I was, and he was a mess. Like, he was the one getting in trouble, and I was, you know, I'm not going to watch him get in trouble. Um, but over the years, you know, my grandparents would come back and visit us to Maryland every summer. We would go back home. So I remember very distinctly that my grandfather had a garden. They had a community garden, actually. And so there were maybe about 10 families that grew tomatoes collard greens and mustard greens. And, and I have a vivid memory of my grandfather and I, I love to go to the garden with him. It was right across the street from the house. And he would carry salt and pepper shakers in his pockets. <laughs> and as we would pick the tomatoes, he's like- You were eating tomatoes. <laughs> right? So, you know, I grew up just, you know, loving being outside. Um, you know, back in the 70s, we had freedoms, you know, we had freedoms to go out and roller skate and ride bikes all around the neighborhood all day, all night, right? Uh, just be home before the lights came on. Um, but in high school, I, my mother always was interested in getting me involved in science and mathematics. You know, here she was a black woman. Um, she was one of my hidden figures, you know, very, very smart, uh, but she had her first child at 19 and had to stop college, <clears throat> uh, get married at 19 and raise a family, right? Um, so I kind of picked up where she left off, okay? So her side of the family, her grandfather was a physician. He was one of the early Meharry Medical College graduates, uh, 1906. He, Dr. Edward E. Nesbitt, uh, received his medical degree from Meharry Medical College in Nashville. And back then, I mean, it's 1906, you know, we had only been emancipated for less than 50 years, you know, and here my grandfather is getting a medical degree. Um, you know, and so at that time, there were only, you know, medical schools for black folks were Meharry and Howard. That was it. Okay. So I feel like I'm channeling, you know, just a lot that comes from, you know, my ancestors. I've taken the time to ask the questions. I love sitting with my elders. Um, and, and so the curiosity is something that just brought me where I am today. Um, my senior year of high school, I was all geared up to go to Spelman. I had Spelman. Jamila's my Spelman sister. Yes, um, I had gone on an HBCU tour, Historically Black Colleges and Universities tour in seventh grade. And mind you, I'm coming from Montgomery County. There weren't a lot of Black people in Montgomery County in 1970s and 1980s. There were enough, but we were just getting there, right? So, you know, we had a very strong church family. And they always did an HBCU tour because, of course, 
people in the black church usually went to HBCUs. So in seventh grade, I fell in love with Spelman after this HBCU tour. So I marched through high, junior high and high school. I played sports. Um, you know, my, remember my dad was a basketball star. So he had us dribbling and, you know, shooting and running around. So I had a way to kind of channel things, but I also had this curiosity about science and math, which my mother was trying to keep pushing. Um, so senior year of high school, I had applied to multiple places, gotten acceptances. You know, senior year is fun. You know, it's supposed to be fun. And it was up until this point. Um, I was chilling <laughs> senior year. I was like, hey, I'm going to Spelman, whatever. Um, and March 27th, 1988, my brother was murdered. You know, he was murdered my senior year of high school. Like, boom. You know, what do you do with that at 17? Yeah, what do you do with that? So trauma has shaped my life from a very, very early age. So without even knowing it, I had to learn how to process trauma. You know, I didn't just fall out and die. I kept living, right? I kept going. And so... Um, at the time, I had gotten a full ride to University of Maryland, which was literally 20 minutes away. I could stay on campus, but come home for dinner, <laughs> you know, catch the bus, uh, maybe have to transfer one or two times to get home. You know, I could have done all that. Um, but my parents knew that I wanted to go to Spelman for five years. You know, here's a 17 year old and she's, <laughs> you know, has her mindset on Spelman. What did I like about Spelman? I love seeing black people like I didn't grow up with that <laughs> you know and these are like I can talk to them about something you know remember images and stereotypes have been pervasive since as long as we've known it about ourselves you know but my parents helped and my family helped connect me beyond you know any bondages that I could have mentally and say Hillary no you're a queen you're <laughs> you know Lift yourself, deal with it, you know, focus on it, do it. And so I decided to pin a letter to my parents at that age and tell them, you know, cause I was trying to process, this was my best friend that I lost. You know, this, he was that person to me, you know, and my parents um, come to find out they were going through their things and, you know, so there was a lot going on that you don't know as children, right? We don't know everything we think we do, but we don't. And so when this bomb dropped, you know, I was like, okay, let me pull back to my family. Let me stay close to them. Let me stay with them. And let me, let me grow still up under their leaf, right? My mother was like, she, it was a letter. I wrote a letter, big, long, boo, boo, boo letter. You know, she really, she came in my room and brought my dad in. And when my dad came in, you know, because he was not a man of many words, may he rest in peace. But he came into, I'm like, uh oh, what are they getting ready to tell me? And they said, Hillary, listen, go to Spelman. Go. Because we know, you know, the term black girl magic was not a term there. But they were like, we, we know that you have it and we want you to go someplace where we know you're going to be supported in developing that. Because my counselor in high school tried to discourage me from going to Spelman, mind you. Oh, no, you need to go to Duke, Duke University, University of Maryland, you know, uh, University of Illinois, Champaign. No, I'm going to Spelman. But where is Spelman? I don't know. You don't know. You need to go look it up. It's in Atlanta, Georgia. 350 Spelman Lane, Southwest, Atlanta, Georgia, 30341. <laughs> right, Jamila? <laughs> 30314. One four. One four. Yes. <laughs> so it's been 30 years, 35 years. <laughs> okay, part, part of the Atlanta University Center, which has graduated and matriculated some of the most world impactful human beings who have ever lived. Morehouse College across the street from Spelman, of course, produced 
Martin Luther King Jr., Maynard Jackson, the first black mayor of Atlanta, just, I mean, if you countless people, Atlanta University, you know, you have John Hope Franklin and yes. classics, the W.B. Du Bois, I mean, <laughs> Atlanta and the Atlanta University Center with Spelman, Morehouse, Clark Atlanta University, uh, Morris Brown, and the Theological Seminary. And I Morehouse mean, Medical School. Remember, Morehouse Medical oh, School had just started in the 80s. Morehouse has its own medical school since yeah. the 80s, which was phenomenal yeah. for that to actually even come into existence. Because yes. as you mentioned, Meharry, and uh, I mean, that was it. That was yeah. Meharry and Howard, that was it. So yeah. th this is a, a, a center of education that is rich in history and, and it instills values yes. and, and a, a fierce survival mode. We stand on the shoulders of some of the most dynamic human beings in the world. Yes. And they were women, you know, and to be in that space of being a young woman, you know, kind of coming out of her cocoon, you know, and it was a state like there wasn't the sexism piece. If it was, we were looking at it from a whole different angle, like you know, it, it was just, it was a beautiful place to grow up. And I'm so thankful that my parents recognized that for me, you know, and said, no, in spite of what we're all dealing with, go, you'll be okay, we'll be okay, because we're still connected. 